How's it going, everybody? I love Emacs. Emacs is a perfectly great editor and it has a lot of amazing things built into it. And one thing that I think I, as well as probably the majority of people that have used Emacs have wanted to do is compile programs, run tests and run interpreters. You know, the usual stuff that you would expect to be able to do in an IDE. Now I've seen a lot of people create packages and come up with their own personal ways to do this in Emacs. However, I don't think as many people realize that this is just built into Emacs. You don't need to use some special plugin or package to do it and it's actually really powerful and I see a lot of useful features that I don't see enough people taking advantage of. So in this video I wanted to dig into the compile package which is built into Emacs that can be used for doing all of these different things and more. Hey everybody, Future Gavin here. Yes, I did get a haircut, thank you very much for noticing. Now in this video I'll be referring to the programming language Python quite heavily. If you aren't familiar with Python and would like to learn it for free, be sure to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant offers an amazing interactive and multi-level Python course. And if that's not your thing, then maybe try and dip your toes into any of its multiple levels of math, data science, and computer science courses. With new courses every month, you'll never run out of content and you'll never run out of learning opportunities. In addition to Brilliant letting you learn at your own pace, it can make the chaotic life that a lot of us live much easier and much more of an opportunity to learn at any given moment, whether you be sitting on the bus, waiting for a call, anything like that. You can always pick up Brilliant and get a little bit of learning done each day. For me, this has been a huge impact in my life since I don't have a lot of time day to day to research and learn new things. Now I only have a few minutes to myself every few days. Because of that, Brilliant's been a huge help in this area since I can pick it up for a few minutes, do a bit of learning, and since it's so interactive, I tend to absorb it a lot better than a big binge moment where I try to learn a bunch on a topic in a few hours. To try everything Brilliant has to offer now for free for a full 30 days, check out brilliant.org slash Gavin Freeborn. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's premium annual subscription. Now let's get into the video. Now for this video we will be using the compile package so we can just evaluate that elisp right here just to get the compile package installed and then what we can do is we can use mx compile and this will by default it will give you make dash k and so this is basically a simple one if you're using make files for your project um, but that's not very helpful in our case because we're not going to be using make we're going to be using python and a python file so just to open up a python file right here this is just a temp file and we can go ahead and try this out so we can do alt x compile this will give us a prompt where we can put in any command we could do pylint python we could even run any program on this really and by default you could also do it without the file name obviously so hitting enter on that will simply run python tmp.py as you'd expect and this will give us the result right here hello world and if we do compile again we get the same result we can also do uh, recompile and this will just run whatever the last command we had was alternatively in the compile window you can hit g and this will rerun as you can see down here recompile which is pretty powerful. Now, if you're in a project and you're using project.el, you can use control X PC, and this will do the same thing, but it will compile from wherever project.el thinks the root of your project is, which is pretty helpful. And we'll use that later on in this video. So you can use the compile command for a bunch of different things. The most important one is finding errors. So by default, if you are in our Python file, and we made an error so let's put l at the start of this and let's maybe hit it a couple extra lines just for the sake of uh, showing this and then if we did compile and we compile it you see that we will get an error now we can actually navigate between these errors by hitting n and p by default and enter will actually take us to the error itself so how does it know about these errors well it's using special filters that we'll talk about later in the video but this is super helpful and powerful for general debugging and testing and stuff like that now compile has a few other useful features this is a uh, one that i got from the emacs wiki actually is if you go to a file like this this right here is an x resources file and whenever you modify an x resources file and you want to update it you have to run a command called xrdb and then the file name which right here i've added this little comment which will actually set the compile command so if i run alt x compile it actually sets xrdb and the file name as the compile command so you can actually use it for a bunch of different stuff um, other than just compiling code and this is a really easy way to set it on a per file basis for example when i was using dwm actually i have a little uh, shortcut right here so that way when i do compile it will do sudo make clean install, which is uh, super useful. 
And so you can use this for basically any file. Alternatively, you can set up a default command. So right here, this is basically a really quick little command. It will set the local variable called compile command. This is what compile by default uses. And I'm basically concatting Python with the current buffer name. So let's go ahead and add that. And then we'll add this to the hook to Python mode. So whenever I open a file in Python mode, this will be set up for us. I opened it brand new this time. And so when I do compile, instead of giving it the, us the previous thing that we had before, it's able to actually determine the path for us. So let's just go ahead and test this out with our error here. And when we do compile, yes, it will give us the error message as we would expect. So what if we want our errors to scroll? So for example, if we get a ton of errors, let's go to dn.c and we do compile, make, clean, and make. So this will just basically rebuild our project. We get a bunch of errors, but by default, it's not gonna know to auto scroll to kind of just bring us to the bottom. And so what we can do to do that is just evaluate this Emacs code right here. And then if we go ahead and compile again, it will scroll our errors with us, which could be very helpful. Now, what if our compile command produces colors? Well, this is pretty easy to handle. So let's go ahead and give you an example of what this would look like. So in, let's go to this project and we will compile, but instead of using our previous command, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do grep dash dash color equals always. And this will be searching, actually let's search for base. So this will be searching all throughout this project. And as you can see right here, we are getting a bunch of garbage because of the escape sequences. So that's not going to really work for us. So to solve this, we can use the ANSI color package as well as this filter right here, um, which I will link both these down in the description. This basically adds an extra filter to our compilation buffer to basically filter our ANSI colors into something we can actually use. So let's go ahead and go back to here compile, run the same compile command. And now as you can see, we get pretty little colors, no longer all these ugly escape sequences. Now this setting right here for the special environments isn't useful for everyone, but say for example, you're compiling something and you need to set some special variables. So here I'm setting the home directory as root for when I'm compiling things. And if I go ahead and do compile and we echo home, you'll see that we get root. Now, if I was to get the environment of home, we would get Gavin OK, because this is only available in the compilation buffer. Uh, super useful if you guys are ever um, needing a special environment that's not gonna be available when you're programming. This is kind of useful if you don't wanna mess up your LSP, but you need to do some special compilation settings um, at certain points. This can be useful for that. Now, I alluded to a way to kind of set up different filters. I talked about the sort of filters that were able to determine what kind of errors we're getting. And so these are actually determined using a regular expression. Now, there's two important variables we have here. So if we did, uh, let's go to a Python project. And if I did, actually, let's do a smaller Python project. Uh, if I did alt x compile, and I changed this to pyrite dot, and hit enter, just give it a second and we will get a bunch of errors. And here we go. So as you can see, we have a bunch of errors, but it's not really able to kind of determine where the errors are coming from. And so this is because there isn't a regular expression available for it to use. If we go back here and we look at these variables, so we do HV and we take a look at this variable. This variable is basically a list of different filters it can use or different regular expressions it can use. And there's a big old breakdown down here. And basically all these values are looked up in this compilation error regxp a list a list. So the a list a list is an a list of all these different values that we get rather than the original, which doesn't really have anything other than just these symbols, which are basically references to the actual regular expression in this a list down here. So what we need to do is we need to basically add a symbol, which is going to represent our different compiler. And we're going to add that to just the regular a list. And then we also need to actually add something to the, um, the a list a list. I know kind of annoying that basically references that symbol and the regular expression. And then how we want to match that regular expression to each of the different, uh, values. So here I've set up one for pyrite, but we can actually kind of derive something like this on our own. So let's go ahead and go to the errors. And so what we can use to derive this is we can do, Alt X and we can do regex builder. 
Now what we can do here is we can kind of come up with how we want to do this. So what we want to do is we want to capture things. So as we can see, our error messages are basically two spaces. So we want to do backslash backslash space. Why do we need two backslashes? Well, a backslash is an escape. And since this is a string, we need two backslashes. And if we did that again in space, then we've matched those two spaces leading up to it. Now a backslash backslash and a parentheses. This will basically capture something. And so now what we want to capture is we want to capture uh, any combination of a slash a to z, a to z, basically saying we want to capture against a slash any letters. We also need to handle a dash or an underscore. And then we want to repeat that. So any repeated thing of any of these varieties. So this will capture our file. Oh, and I forgot the period. There we go. Now we can capture the pi at the end. And so that will capture our file name. Now we need to do a colon and then we need to capture our line number. So doing the same thing, we will do zero to nine plus. So basically any number from zero to nine. And then that's what we are going to capture and then colon. And then we need to do the exact same thing because we're basically, instead of capturing a line number, we're capturing a column and that should be enough for now. So as you can see, pretty easy to capture all of this stuff. And then you could just say, do a dat star dollar sign, uh, basically just as a way to capture everything else. All right, cool. Now we have created our regex. Now, if we put that here, it's basically, I think it actually is identical. Yeah, okay, that is identical to what I ended up writing originally. Now, we want to add this to our A list, A list, but the big thing that we still need to do is determine how we're going to map from this file, which is here, the line number that is here, and the column number that is here. Now, the nice thing is that basically the way that the actual matching works is in our A list, we give it our um, obviously the symbol to match to it. We give it a regular expression and then each of these represents one of the things that we have captured. So the first one is our file, the second one is our line number, and the third one is the column. Now if we were to transpose this, that basically means that the first thing we captured was our number, our line number, the second thing was our file, and the third thing was our column. Uh, so basically, luckily it's pretty self-explanatory out of the box when you go into this. So if you actually look at this variable, it explains it decently well, um, but you probably want to look at it. So basically, what's our regex? And then the first thing that it captures is your file. And so we just say that the file is the first element. And then optionally, you can give a line number, you can give a column number and a type. That's kind of how you can add your own filters. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask me because I feel like this was actually kind of a questionable example to use. Um, but yeah, now we can add it by doing Control X, Control E on each of these guys. And then if we go down into here and we hit G to rerun our compile compilation, we will actually get something useful. And there we go. So now we can like navigate by hitting N P and we can see all of our errors. Very powerful, very simple. Okay. Now this one is kind of just something that I never expected to see in the editor, but I found really cool. And so that is, if we go to a shell, let's go to the same project we were looking at before and we did pyrite dot. So there we go, we get our errors. Now, obviously in the shell, we're not gonna have the same stuff available to us as we did in compile mode, but you can do shell minor mode, hit enter, and this will actually allow you to use those very same regular expressions as you had previously. And then if you do control alt P, this will navigate between them. And if you hit enter, it will jump to the file and you can use all those same regexes. It works exactly as you'd expect. It works with your mouse too. Now this is pretty sweet, but some people don't even use the shell uh, functionality. Well, let me tell you this, it works in other places. There's even more uses for it. So let's go ahead and kill this shell. And instead we will open vterm. Now in vterm, if we cd to the same thing, cd Aries uh, endorser, and we do pyrite dot, we get the same errors, just a second. And there we go, we've gotten the same errors. Now if we enter the same mode, yep, that's right, it works just as you'd expect, mouse support and everything, even in vterm, which is super awesome and not really something that I expected to see. And I actually was just only recently told about this the other day. So pretty cool, a really awesome feature. If you guys make a lot of use of the shells or terminals, you can make use of the compilation functionality right from there. 
Anyways, guys, I appreciate all of you for coming and watching this video. I hope that really last part got you as excited as it got me excited when I found out about it, because even though it's not something I use every single day, it's something that every once in a while I'll find like a backtrace or an error message in some logs when I had a shell open and I can just run this and boom, right away I can jump to the errors and I don't have to like reverse engineer where it would be, which is really awesome. Uh, highly recommend giving some of this stuff a try, especially just the general compile functionality um yeah anyways that's uh, about it for me today uh i would like to give a big shout out to my supporters on patreon and github sponsors you guys have done so much for me um yeah, it really means a lot that you guys have supported me, especially when, you know, sometimes I'm not able to upload as much as I would like. And yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Great seeing you guys. Great talking to you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.